Okay, let's see. Uh, it says sketch this graph. 2 sine x minus 1. Now, before I start, I've got a big advantage because I know that number 2 there means the amplitude. It's a sine wave that's twice as tall as it normally would be if it's just 1 sine x. And I know the whole thing is shifted down 1. Well, that's a lot of things to know. And now, if I let x equals 0 there, the sine of 0 is 0. That means 0 and minus 1 is a place where it goes through the y-axis. It's the y-intercept. Now, I know the period of this is 360 degrees. So what's going to happen? It's going to go minus 1. And then after 90 degrees, it's going to go all the way up 2. It's got an amplitude of 2 from minus 1 all the way to 1. At 90 degrees, it's going to be 1. You could put it in there. 2 times 90 degrees minus 1 is 1. 2 times the sine of 90 degrees. And then if I go, if I go another um, 90 degrees to 180, I'll go back to minus 1. And at 270, I'll be at minus 3. And at 360, I'll be back to minus 1. Now, how did I know that it would, the x-intercepts are 30 and 150? Well, I want to find out where y is 0. This is something you guys should be able to do. You add 1, uh, and you get 1. Divide by 2. The sine of x is half. Well, go shift sine on your calculator, and you get x is 30. And 30 degrees works, and the other one that works is 90 more than that, 150. The sine of 150 is a half, so there's those two. Maybe you get the whole all the marks just for these endpoints and turning points, but I think you might need those x-intercepts. What's the amplitude? The amplitude is 2. It goes, that's how tall the wave is. What's the period, the distance it takes to go through a complete wave? It's 360 degrees. And range is all the possible things y can be. It can go up to 1, and it can go down to minus 1. That's how you write the range. y is less than or equal to 1, but greater than or equal to minus 3.